I'm Deanna, and welcome to another doll repaint video. So, once upon a time, or more accurately, earlier this year, I decided to embark on an epic doll repaint journey by creating a doll for every major arcana card of the tarot deck. I started with the tower card, and then I created the empress card, and then I got a little distracted by other dolls, and the tarot collection kind of sat in the sidelines waiting. Well, I'm happy to announce that today the wait is over and I am finally ready to share my latest doll for the Tarot card collection. At the end of my Empress video, I drew three cards to choose my next doll from. I asked you guys to help me pick which one I should do next and you guys really wanted me to do the Sun card. And to be honest, that was the one I was really leaning towards too. After reading about the card, it's easy to see why so many of you voted for the Sun. To many, the Sun card is considered to be the most positive card in the Tarot deck. The Sun brings light and warmth to the world, and it represents a renewal in optimism, and it represents energy itself. It's about self-reflection, refinding or finding new passions and joys, and it's about radiating love and affection towards those who you are the closest to. And it's about maintaining your personal innocence while balancing that with personal strength and confidence. Where there's positivity for your future, the sun will cast its light upon it, and it also brightens up the other more serious cards drawn from the deck. Through all these positive things, I really appreciate this card because it represents freedom. The freedom to find yourself by using optimism and positivity as a tool to take you to where you need to be. For my doll, I want her to both represent the optimism and hope that comes with the sun and also the purity and innocence of one's inner self. The sun card has nothing to hide and neither does my doll. She is a confident, well-assured woman who knows who she is and what she wants in life. We've got a lot of work to tackle, so enough talking, bring on the sun. For our Radiant Sun card, I will be working with this used Laguna Blue Monster High doll. I was drawn to Laguna for this project because of her wide set large eyes, full lips, and large forehead. She really reminds me of the model Lily Cole, whose cherub-like face seemed perfect for a card all about innocence, love, and freedom. Let's get into the transformation by prepping Laguna for the repaint. I won't be using her original hair, so I'm first going to cut it down really short. This will make pulling out the old hair plugs a lot easier when the time comes. To get out those old, nasty hair plugs, I'm going to have to remove her head from her body, which isn't as simple as just yanking the head off of her neck. I first have to soften the plastic to avoid breaking the neck peg, which I will need later to reattach her head. To soften the plastic, my preference is to soak the head in boiling hot water for a couple of minutes. Now I can take my forceps and pull out all the old hair and the old glue that was holding it in there. I personally love this part, but some people think it's nasty. What do you think? Is it super satisfying or super gross? Next up, I'm using my old friend Pure Acetone in a cotton pad to take off her factory face paint. After all, it is kind of hard to repaint a face when there's already a face on there. Once I have a blank canvas, I'll wash her head with soap and water to remove any acetone residue and let her dry. Off camera, I decided to get rid of her sea monster ears using an X-Acto blade. I won't be constructing a new set for her because her hair is just going to be covering her ears anyway. Now that the prep work is done, we're going to start working on her hair. I decided to go with very curly blonde hair for this doll to be almost like rays of light. 
For her bouncy ringlets, I'm going with this hair that I got from the Doll Planet, and that means that I'm going to be rerouting her hair instead of gluing on yarn wefts. So the thing about rerouting that I've learned is that you want to do it before you start your repaint so that you don't chip or crack the new face. But as you can see, I spaced on that and I already started putting on the base skin tone. What can I say? I just get really excited sometimes. If you aren't really familiar with rerouting, it's basically when you take synthetic hair and punch it into your doll's scalp with a hooked needle. If you want to learn more about it and why it can sometimes chip the paint, I did a more in-depth segment about it in my Dungeon Master doll video. I'm following old hair plugs starting at the lowest row and working my way up. At this point, I've gone through my first bag of this pale wheat color and I'm about to dig into my second. The hair has a lot of volume, so I'm trying to avoid overloading her with hair by leaving more space between the rows as I work my way up. I also don't want there to be gaps that show her scalp, but as a precaution, you can see that I painted her scalp with this yellow ochre color. While I'm putting in the plugs, I'm trying so hard not to crack the base that I put on, but in a little bit, you'll see that it actually didn't matter and I'm gonna have to start fresh anyway. I'm going to be making her a large headpiece, so I'm actually really close to being done with her reroute. I know that there's a lot of bare scalp showing, but that's gonna help me attach the headpiece flush to her head and not have it be all wobbly on top of her curls. Plus, I'm about to run out of hair, so it kind of worked out. Always buy more hair than you think you need. Now I'm going to stuff all of her hair into this old sock that I'm using as a bonnet. While I repaint her face, I'm going to be using all kinds of pigments and sealant, and this will keep her hair from getting stained and crusty from all that business. Guys, I broke down and bought an airbrush. I'm still getting adjusted and learning how to use it, but the white acrylic application went on so smooth, so I definitely did a little happy dance when I was finished. Using one of my soft bristled pastel brushes, I'm applying what I call the base skin tone. This is a starter skin tone color, which I use as a jumping off point that I base the rest of my color choices on. To get even and saturated color, I'm going to apply three coats of soft pastels using burnt sienna tint, and I'm going to set and seal each layer using Mr. Super Clear sealant. And after all that work to cover up her blue skin, I'm actually coming in with a similar blue and applying it to select places of her face to give the appearance of undertones. I also talked more about undertones in my Dungeon Master doll repaint if you want to go back and learn more about why I'm doing this stuff. All right, so after spraying with Mr. Super Clear, the next part of her repaint is applying contouring. I'm starting off with a light burnt sienna color, and I'll be working my way up to darker colors. This gives the face the illusion of shadows and depth, and really carves out the defining features of the face. I do it pretty similarly to how contouring is done with makeup, and apply it to the traditional areas like the temples, cheekbones, and jawline. It's kind of funny that I love contouring doll faces, but when it comes to my own makeup, I find it kind of exhausting to do. I like to tell myself that I'll wake up early and really go to town on my makeup, but yeah, sleep always wins. That's okay though, I'll stick to dolls for now. Moving on with her skin, we're going to be doing a good old-fashioned texture spray. To make her skin look more like actual skin, I like to spritz on watered-down acrylic paint using a toothbrush. For her skin, I'm using a watered-down brown color and red to get that look. It always looks a little wild after I do the spray, so I'm coming in with a cotton ball to tame it down a little bit. The paint also gets everywhere, so be sure to put something down if you're going to be doing this. And 
be sure to move any laptops that you're watching Netflix on far away while you do it if you don't want to have a textured laptop too. Now that my texture layer is dry, I'm contouring in a more fine detailed way with a darker brown tone. I'm using it to make the eye sockets recede and to define the sides and bridge of the nose. With Monster High dolls having such little noses, I think it's important to do this so it doesn't get lost on her face. I've been giving her a bronzy glow because obviously the sun card would have a great tan, but I also want to define the highlighted areas of her face. The tops of the cheeks and the forehead are important areas to brighten, and it will bring these areas of the face forward. On this layer, I'm also applying her blush. I'm going for a stronger red for her because I like the idea of her being a little bit sunburned. I don't know how the sun got sunburned, but I'm going for it. Right now, the highlight and the blush are sitting on top of the skin, and they don't look like they're part of it. But once I spray it with Mr. Super Clear, they'll settle into the other layers below. This part used to freak me out because of how intense it looks, but I've learned to just take a deep breath and push through. The shading of her face is done, and now it's time for us to give her some eyes. To block in the eyes, I'm switching over to my watercolor pencils, and I'm trying to draw them in so that I keep the wide Laguna eye shape, because something about them just feels so innocent to me. At this stage, I'm really focusing on the placement of the lash line, waterline, and the tear ducts. Starting with a red color works really well for this stage because since it's a natural color to this area, it will look more natural once I start to build up on it with darker colors. Now that the eye shape is in and defined, I want to put in the lower eyelid crease. This can be a tricky area to define because we want to add some shading to show the curvature of the eye under the skin, but not overshade and make it look like she has some serious baggage under her eyes. Highlights are definitely key to making this part work. Next up, we're going to keep defining her eyeballs by shading the eyeballs. So to make them look like they are real and sitting in her sockets, we have to shade them. With a gray pencil, I'm working the shading in the corners of her eyes, under the upper lash line, and above the water line to make them appear spherical. Now with a brown pencil, I'm lightly tapping on some more prominent freckles because our sun card definitely should have freckles. Moving on from the freckles, I think it's time to start blocking in her eyebrows. I'm starting to apply them using this honey-colored pencil. It doesn't show too well on her skin, but the light color will help me work out the placement and the shape. On top of the honey, I'm drawing in some defined hair texture using a light brown. This is where I'm really figuring out the direction of the brow hairs and trying to make the brows look more natural instead of blocky shapes. With our mid-tone in, I'm carefully bringing in this darker brown for more defined hairs. I want the brows to stay a light color, so it's really important that I don't get too heavy-handed with the darker color. If I take it too far, the brows won't look right with her hair color. From the brows, we are moving down to the lips. Off camera, I applied a pale pink as the base lip color, and I've defined the mouth line with a darker purple color. I want her lips to stand out, so on top of the pale pink, I'm applying a crimson red shade. I'm first lining the lips with the new color and moving inward and blending it with the pale pink. The closer I work toward the mouth line, the more of the light pink I want to show through like an ombre effect. Thank you. 
Her mouth is open just a little bit, so to work the color all the way into the crease, I'm taking a wet paintbrush and picking up pigment from my watercolor pencil so I can really get it in there. So at this point, it may be bothering you that her eyes are two blank spaces. Yeah, I hear you yelling at your computer over there. <laughs> so now I'm finally going to add her irises. I'm going to be giving her bright blue eyes. So the first layer of eye color is this very pale blue shade. I will be working on my placement and trying to keep the whites of her eyes as even as possible on each side. Now that the placement is in, I'm bringing in a bolder blue to the outer ring and blending it into the center of the iris. I want to build on the light blue, so I don't want to cover it up completely yet. Next up is the really fun part, and that's adding all the fun texture to the irises. With the white, I'm adding some lines to make her eyes pop and sparkle, and in between those lines, I'm working in a few different shades of blue to give them dimension. With the color blocking in place, what's really going to bring everything together is adding the pupil. Taking black, I'm working and melding the pupil in with the rest of the eye color. I don't want the pupil to be a perfect circle, so I'm trying to marry the eye color and the pupil together so that they don't look like two blunt objects sitting next to each other. For the last itty bitty face up details, I'm bringing in some white acrylic paint to do the catch lights and to make other areas pop. The scolarias are looking a little dull, so I'm going to brighten them up with just a touch of the white paint as well, but trying not to erase the shading too much either. Tear ducts are wet little membranes, so they need little dots of highlight too. After spraying her with a final layer of Mr. Super Clear and letting it dry, the last thing for me to do is to add some gloss to her eyes and lips to really make her come alive. It's time to release her mane of hair from her bonnet and start crafting her headpiece. The plan is to make her a golden helmet shaped like the sun itself. The sun will rest on top of her head, and I'll be making the rays out of this light crafting bossa wood. I chose bossa wood because it's sturdy enough to sit on her head and not have the rays droop, but light enough that it won't significantly weigh her head down either. Since this part will be sitting on top of her head, I've traced a basic shape of the curvature of the skull, and using some little templates, I'm arranging the sunbeams around it. I'm going with the classic shapes of straight and pointy and sharp squigglies, and adding little spikes in between. The sun on the card represents life, energy, and clarity, so it makes sense to me to have a large sunburst of energy beaming from her mind. Now I'm going to cut it out using my X-Acto blade. One drawback of using this boss of wood is that it cracks really easily if you're trying to cut it with scissors. But the X-Acto blade gives me really clean cuts, although there can be some cracking still if you aren't careful. Next, I'm going to give the sun rays a glow up using this glittery gold craft paper. I'm gluing the wooden rays directly to the craft paper so I can cut around each beam. I chose to use the craft paper instead of just dunking the wooden rays into glitter because I can get a cleaner look with the paper. The wood is great for a sturdy structure, but after some adjustments, it definitely looks a little rough. The helmet is going to have a visor in the front, so right now I'm fitting a transitional piece that I can connect the sun rays and the visor to using more of the golden paper. 
I cut a little square out of the paper and I'm working on cutting the right curve to match both her hairline and to cover this little area that went unpainted because of her bonnet. It's kind of giving her like a golden pope look at the moment, but once everything is fitted and in place, I'll trim the pope hat down. The first part of securing everything in place is taking these little pins and securing the cone to her head. Next is fitting the visor. I'm using a little crown I had in my collection, which was originally pink, but I gave it a coat of gold spray paint. The sun's rays on the card represent strength and illumination, so I chose to make her headpiece like a medieval helmet to represent the strength of her life force. I'm gluing it to the cone, making sure that it doesn't wiggle around and is even on both sides. After that, I'm placing the Sunray headpiece behind the visor's band, gluing it on to both the front and back sides so that it really stays in place. Now that I have the headpiece in place, I'm seeing that there's a lot of scalp still showing in the back underneath the cone. So instead of trying to reroute without damaging anything, I'm actually going to glue in some trimmed off scraps of hair in this space. For a final bit of pizzazz, because the huge headpiece, ornate visor, and gold glitter just wasn't enough, I'm going to cover the seam at the base of the sun rays with a bit of this chain. I got this little pack of different chains for nail art, and I think this one fits with the sunray theme really well. I'm going to keep her body repaint really, really short because I'm going to have a second doll featured in this video. And if I keep everything, this video is going to be about three hours long. For her body, I've used the same color rules that I used on her face. Right now, I'm bringing the blues back into her skin, and then I'll jump into the contouring. Like on the face, between each layer of pastels, I set it with a coat of Mr. Super Clear Sealant to lock in the colors in place. But, like I said, I'm going to do the rest off camera because I'm excited to introduce the second character for our sun card. Hi, I'm Diana, and welcome to a horse repaint video. For this doll, I struggled with deciding which character on the card to make the central focus for the doll. There's the child, the son, and the horse. She's a combo of the son and the child, but I couldn't quite bring myself to give her like horse legs to tie it all together, and I didn't want to lose the horse either, so I decided that she's just going to have to have her very own horse. I was able to find a secondhand Nightmare doll on eBay, and I'll be doing a total makeover on Nightmare the Mare. The white horse is a very important symbol to the Sun card as it represents freedom. Step one from turning this blue horse into our freedom steed is removing the factory face paint, just like we did with the Laguna doll. I'm going to change the horse's coat from blue to match the white horse on my Dex card, which means I'll be airbrushing everything white. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with the mane and tail yet, so I'm wrapping it in masking tape to protect it. While I'm still figuring out my airbrush, I did the step off camera again. After the paint dried, I gave the whole horse three coats of Mr. Super Clear to provide a textured surface to work on. Now I'm giving the white a dusting of pink soft pastels. Some white horses have pink skin which shows through the coat, and I wanted to do the same for my horse. On top of the pink, I'm going to build up the colors in the coat. If you look at pictures of white horses, you'll see that they aren't just a solid white color. There are creams and grays throughout, so starting with a light brown color, I'm working those color shifts into our horse's coat. I'm starting to work in sections on the horse's body, working my way from the head down to the dock and back legs. This makes it easier for me to work so I can actually grab onto something without smudging things everywhere.
the light brown has been sealed and set, and now I'm moving on to a mid-tone gray. I'm starting to define sections of the face that I want to stand out, like the eyes and the patterning that I have planned for her muzzle. I'm also starting to work it into the curvatures of the muscles, making sure to blend the color out to really emphasize the shapes of each section. Then I'll repeat with a deep shade of brown. Now the next thing I want to do for her coat is give the appearance of hair texture. Taking a white watercolor pencil, I'm going to draw on little hairlines all over her coat, following the direction of each muscle and body part. I'm going to be doing this for the whole horse and caboodle, which is definitely going to take some time. Since this is a short-haired horse, I don't want the hair marks to be too long, so I'm just applying them in short sections and trying to keep the marking at a good length. Now after all that work adding color and hair marks, I'm going to apply a couple layers of white soft pastels over the whole horse. Just like with human skin where I try to make the color variations and textures look like they're an actual part of the skin, I want to do the same with this coat. The color blocking and the hair texture is really strong, and if I left it how it is, I would lose that whole white horse aesthetic. Adding the white pastels will tone down the underpainting and make the colors look like they're coming through instead of just sitting on top of the coat. It also adds a bit of subtlety to the hair markings, which gives a more natural appearance. I ended up giving our horse three coats in total of white pastels, spraying Mr. Super Clear in between each layer. Now it's time to give our horse a horsey face up. I'm blocking in where I want the eyes to be and making sure I sketch in a space for the eyelids. I also want to show where the brow bone is since horses don't have eyebrows like humans do. Our horse is going to have dark brown eyes that will have a lot of shadow cast on them. I give them the whole eye a base of brown and on top of which I'll draw on the irises. Unfortunately, I had a hard time capturing the fine eye details on camera because it was hard to balance the horse, be close enough to see what I was doing, and get everything in shot. Ultimately, I had to hold the horse against my chest to be able to get the details in. Next, I'm going to be working on shading the muzzle. Her muzzle is going to be a mixture of dark grays and pink. Starting with the darkest grays of the mouth, it will soften and blend out as we work upwards. On top of the nostrils, I'm going to leave a spot of pink showing through, which will balance out all of the colors in the coat, and I think it's really cute.
Jumping back to the eyes, I'm going to give her some white eyelashes and I'm giving her the oh so important catch lights to her eyes and tear ducts. During the horse repaint, I haven't really talked about her legs and hooves. I've seen a lot of white horses that have gray tones on their legs, and I want to add this touch to our horse as well. On the sun card, there's this gray brick wall behind the horse and child, and this wall represents personal boundaries, which I think is so important to finding balance to your passions and personal freedoms. So the gray legs will be a nod to strength of owning and staying true to your boundaries. Moving down to the outer parts of the hooves, I want them to look multi-tonal, so I'm blending dark gray with brown to make the base color. After setting the base color, I'm coming in with two different colors of watercolor pencils to give the appearance of ridges and texture in the hoof. One is a dark brown color, and the other will be my light honey color for a bit of highlight. Using the same Sculpey gloss that I used on the Sun Doll, the last part of the repaint is to give some eyes some gloss, and I'm going to do the same on the hooves because they tend to have a bit of a sheen to them. Now that the repaint is done, I'm moving on to what could be considered a horse outfit, starting with the shoes. Horseshoes, that is. Our horse is a little extra, so she will be getting four golden horseshoes today. Using a template, I'm drawing the shoes onto a piece of craft foam. After I cut these out, they'll each get a couple coats of gold paint. And I'm also going to press into the foam to get the appearance of nails in the horseshoes because, like I said, she's extra. Moving on to the other parts of the horse outfit, I'm going to make her a blanket that will go under her saddle. I've got this gold sequin fabric and I'm going to glue it to some craft foam to give it some lift. Back to our horse. I put the blanket on her back and now I just need to clip on the saddle. The saddle was originally blue, and I spray painted it gold. Unfortunately, later some of the spray paint would leave marks on her coat, but you live and learn. So I've decided what to do with her mane and tail, and drum roll please. I'm going to chop it off. The purple doesn't go with my look, and I don't think painting the hair white would end up looking good. So I'm going to remove the tail and mane and make yarn wefts to replace the old hair. More on this though later. Now I have to make some decorative gear for our horse, which after researching I found out is actually called tack and not horse jewelry. I guess I wasn't enough of a horse girl growing up to know that. <laughs> Using some faux leather, I cut out this shield shape for a chest piece and I'm attaching this sun charm to its front. Using some jewelry hoops, I'm attaching a strap which will hang down from the base of the horse's neck. With the chest piece in place, I'm adding some extra charms to the straps that are in the shape of sunflowers. 
Sunflowers are on the Sun card and they represent vitality and life force. And I was so excited when I found these adorable charms. Next up, I'm making her bridle, which I'm making out of the same faux leather I used for the chest piece. The first part is the strap that will go around the muzzle. I've left a little extra fabric which I will glue together and rotate under the chin. I'm using a leather hole puncher to punch a little hole which I'll clip her reins into. Now I'm adding more straps to the bridle and I'm going to add little sun charms to where I connected the two pieces. And then one last strap to go across the forehead. With her tack in place, it's time to go back to her mane and tail. I made her some hair out of white yarn, and instead of brushing it out completely, I left it so that it has a soft and wavy texture. Using hot glue, I'm first adding it to the front section of the mane, which is coming down like bangs for a horse. I'm placing the weft down her neck and covering the seam the old mane left. To give her a thick and voluminous mane, I'm laying two rows of wefts on top of each other. With the seam completely covered, you can see that there's some excess hair poking out on the left hand side, which looks super messy. No worries though, for the rest of the main style, I'm trimming this part and then I'm going to flip the hair over to drape on the other side. Flipping will give her main volume and as a bonus, it will cover up the glue used to apply the wefts. I'm just gonna add some more glue so that the main stays in place. Now to plug up that tail hole. I've bundled some of the yarn wefts together and I am first keeping them in place with an elastic and then to make it easier to insert the tail, I'm wrapping the tip with some masking tape. Using hot glue to hold it all together, I'm going to wrap the base of the tail with a piece of yarn to make it look like it's a wrapped ponytail. This covers up any seams and gives the tail an extra fancy lift. Now that her ride is done, I'm going to give our sun card a haircut. I like the volume of her hair, but it needs to be shaped. Our doll represents the sun, but she's also going to represent the figure riding the horse on the tarot card. 
The card features a naked little Cherubian child which represents innocence and purity. I'm going to mimic the concept of nudity as innocence by using this sheer fabric with stripes of gold sequins. To the back, I'm giving her a long draping cape that has these lovely cascading flowers. I wasn't able to find a sunflower pattern that I felt fit this doll, but I fell in love when I found this fabric. The nude tones and the gold sequins go beautifully with the rest of the outfit, and the flowers still represent the vitality that the sunflowers represent on the tarot card. I'm trimming the cape down on the sides so that it can flow with ease, and I'm also adding a little sun charm for a little touch of fun. For her shoes, I've selected this pair for my collection, and I just love the little fleur-de-lis heels. Now that everything for her outfit is done, I'm very carefully putting her head back onto her body. I just have one final prop, and it's that long red banner that's featured on the card. It symbolizes love, passion, and the blood of renewal. The shimmery ribbon I found is wired, so I'm bending and shaping it to make it look like it's flapping in the wind beside her. Time for her final look. Here is our sun card doll as she rides her majestic horse friend while bringing the day's warmth and light. I love how bright and sparkly she looks in her gown and headpiece, and who knew that giving a horse a makeover could be so much fun. I keep referring to her as the horse, which is starting to feel rude, so let me know in the comments if you have any suggestions for a name for her. I will be continuing my tarot doll collection, and like the other dolls in my series, I'm going to shuffle my deck and draw three cards to choose my next doll from. First, we have the Queen of Swords. Second is Death. And third is the sun's opposite, the moon. Which card do you want me to make next? Let me know in the comments. All right, I'm going to ponder my card choices, but I'll see you next time with another doll repaint video. Bye!